All right, why don't we go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for joining today's Thirsty Thursday webinar, The Health and Wellness Benefits of Daylighting, presented by Helen Saunders with Technoform North America. Helen has 24 years of experience in glass technology and manufacturing with expertise in functional coatings, insulating glass, and thermal zone, te thermal zone technologies for fenestration. She is an active member of several industry organizations, including president of the Facade Tectonics Institute, vice president of the Insulating Glass Manufacturers Alliance, and immediate past president of NGA's Glazing Industry Code Committee. She has a Master of Arts in Natural Sciences and a doctoral degree in Surface Science from the University of Cambridge in England. Helen, welcome. I'll let you take it from here. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate you guys uh, uh, joining us today. And um, uh, just a couple um, notices on the right, the full conference in Glassfield America coming up, which uh, I think Sarah wanted me to mention. Um, as we um, move on through our uh, agenda today, um, I wanted to um, cover really three areas um, that are related to the benefits of windows in buildings. We'll start with doing some biology, um, uh, looking a little uh, at the uh, circadian rhythms of our bodies and their impact uh, on light or, and the body's response to views. Um, and then we're gonna dig into some data um, relative to three different occupancy types, um, healthcare, schools, and offices. And then we're gonna wrap it up with um, a look at the uh, impact of our built environment on the global health and some of the global health epidemics happening today. So um, I'm gonna start on the biology side and take a look at uh, circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are really our internal processes that regulate um, sleep and wake cycles and other bodily functions that are um, that have a close to 24-hour cycle and that's why it's called um, circadian because circa means about and dn comes from uh, the word uh, dm which is uh, day so they roughly um, uh, repeat every 24 hours now they're built into our systems our body systems um, but they're adjusted or what we call entrained by cues that we get from our environment like light. Sometimes there's also temperature, but generally um, light is a key entrainer of these rhythms. Um, the, um, how light um, uh, sends messages uh, to our body um, to entrain these circadian rhythms is through our eyes. Um, our eyes don't just have rods and cones for seeing, they also have other receptors, uh, which are called non-visual non receptors, which allow uh, information from light to be transmitted to the, uh, our body clock um, in our brain. Now, these circadian rhythms are um, actually impact or control our alertness, our mood. They regulate hormone production. They impact our immune system, our metabolism, and also our cardiovascular system. And so if you have a disruption of these circadian cycles, um, or you might call a misalignment to the light-dark cycle of the day, you can have significant impacts on health. Um, for example, shift workers have been shown to have higher um, likelihood of cancers, um, higher likelihood of obesity, high li higher likelihood of cardiovascular disorders. And we all know what it's like um, to have jet lag when our bodies um, don't understand what time it is during the day because we've had a time difference change across the Atlantic, for example. Um, you can see on the right, um, this is actually um, a circadian cycle of our body um, that um, uh, where you can see hormones being um, secreted at different times of the day, again, determined by the light-dark cycle. So in the evening, when it's night, we have melatonin secretion, which helps us sleep. In the morning, when the, when the sun comes up, it triggers serotonin um, uh, production and suppresses melatonin um, secretion, and therefore it wakes us up. Um, and so what you find is that if you have light at the wrong time of the day, 
you can disrupt your circadian rhythms. And when you um, do that, you can have some significant health, of, um, health effects. Not only do you get disrupted sleep, and of course, there's a lot of evidence um, that we see in the, um, in the literature these days how important it is to have sleep, especially the deep delta sleep. Um, it has effects on your ability to maintain a healthy weight, um, has impacts on your mood and can um, cause depression. Heart disease is another uh, consequence of having light at the wrong time of, of day and having circadian disruption. We talked about cancer earlier, um, uh, which is also seen to be a side effect of uh, circadian disruption and seen a lot in shift workers and also an impaired immune system. If you have circadian disruption, you can actually um, be more susceptible to illness. So there's a lot um, riding on having light at the right time of day. And in fact, um, we're beginning to know this and it's becoming mainstream um, because I think um, many of you will have seen the night shift function on your cell phones um, where um, they're reducing the amount of the blue light in the evening to reduce the chances of having some circadian disruption. Blue light at night is very disruptive to melatonin production. And normally the um, sunlight uh, or daylight that you get through, um, uh, through the normal uh, uh, light dark cycle um, uh, in the environment is tuned to have blue light in the in the morning and less blue light in the um, uh, in the afternoon and of course as you go into darkness no light at all. So blue light at night is especially disruptive um, to sleep. Uh, you want to have blue light in the morning, not in the evening. So what you find with daylight, um, uh, a friend of mine, um, uh, Deborah Burnett from Burnett Benier Consulting, she coins the phrase daylighting, daylight is a drug and nature is the dispensing physician. And that is primarily because um, daylight gives you the right amount of light, as in i.e. the right dose, of the right wavelength or the right color at the right time of day. And uh, so daylight is a drug and nature is the dispensing physician. And it really sums up why daylight um, is so important to us and why it's the right source of light for us as to be healthy humans. Now, we'll talk a, a little bit more later about the impacts of daylight um, in our buildings. But I want to point out it's um, the health of effects. It's just not about daylight. It's also about views. Views matter a lot, um, but actually uh, views of nature matter even more. And according to uh, uh, E.O. Wilson, and nature holds the key to our aesthetic, intellectual, cognitive, and even spiritual satisfaction. So views matter because just at a first level, it helps us refocus and relax our eyes when we can focus on something far away but it also satisfies our need for feeling of safety. You know, we are, have evolved um, over many uh, hundreds and thousands of years um, to be in, currently in this civilization where we don't have to worry about saber-toothed tigers, but um, early on in our development, we had a lot of predators and we needed to be able to see out to understand what was happening um, outside and protect ourselves from um, uh, nature's predators. Views of nature appear to matter a lot to our health as well. Uh, it seems that the, the benefits, not just on our physical health, but on our mental health, are increasingly becoming understood. And we have this balance in our bodies of our fight-flight um, uh, reactions, uh, in our cognitive functions with our internal bodily functions of relaxation. And interaction with nature is being found to increase our internal functions in terms of reducing our stress levels, reducing our irritability. So views of nature, um, whether it's out of our window or whether we have plants around us, 
um, have a significant impact on our stress levels and relaxation and our mood. Uh, here's an example actually of a study um, called the Global Impact of Biophilic Design in the Workplace. One of the key findings was that windows, window views of greenery and water were linked to lower stress levels compared to those um, that were in the building that didn't have a window. And there's a lot more data about the impact of views, um, which we'll talk about in a moment. So um, what I wanted to do is um, try and um, break down the data that is uh, currently available that looks at the beneficial um, impact of daylight and views um, on building occupants into three separate areas. Uh, one related to healthcare applications, one related to schools and offices, uh, and schools and then offices. So first of all, before doing that, I wanted to um, just display this infographic, which is a really nice summary of a lot of the um, studies that have been done over the last, um, I would say, 20 years, um, looking at the impact of daylight and views on humans. This is from the case, the business case for green building by the World Green Building Council, and you can see um, some key statistics around the impact of views and the impact of daylight. And we'll dig into um, some of the studies um, from which these are derived um, in a moment. So let's start with healthcare. So it turns out that we knew about um, the positive power of sunlight um, for healthcare. Um, many, many years ago, back in the uh, 19th century. Um, Florence Nightingale uh, figured this out. Um, and she actually designed what was called the Nightingale Ward that had access to sunlight and great ventilation um, that was implemented in hospitals um, in the uh, 1900s. Unfortunately, as we got further through the, the uh, 20th century, um, that seemed to fall by the wayside and we, we missed um, the, uh, that design criteria for, for hospitals, which is now over the last 10 or so years coming back. So the person um, who has been leading the research um, on the impact of daylight and views in healthcare is Roger Ulrich, and that's a picture of him uh, here. Um, and over the last 10 to 20 years, um, there's actually been um, over 50 studies um, that demonstrate the positive influence um, of daylight and views um, in healthcare environments, not just to patients and their recovery, but also relative to staff and um, the visitors. Um, you'll see a quote from uh, Roger Ulrich here um, saying that larger windows should be provided in healthcare environments to permit more exposure to daylight and those restorative nature views in patient room, uh, rooms. So let's dig into some of the data. So there are a number of different areas that we can see benefit from daylight and views in, in uh, healthcare environments, and one of them is uh, reduced hospital stays. Now, um, Roger Ulrich had a seminal study that's quoted a lot um, where he showed that post-operative recovery times were reduced um, by about eight and a half percent. Now, if you use some statistics, um, about eight and a half percent shorter stays, if you look at the cost per day for a hospital stay post-op, um, post then you look at the number of uh, major procedures in the US, um, with an average stay of around five days. Um, if you assume you take a five and a half percent, uh, sorry, an eight and a half percent reduction on that day, you, as, you can estimate um, that you could save around $93 million a year just on reducing hospital stays. Now, there are other, other data uh, regarding um, hospital stays as well. Um, some other researchers have looked at mental health um, conditions and stays in hospitals related to those. And you can see again in this slide, um, multiple days um, shorter um, for those that have um, views and windows compared to those that don't. Uh, 
Other patient impacts include actually the use of less pain medication and, of course, the reduction in cost that goes around that. And then actually improved outcomes um, for patients. Now, if we look at re reduction in pain medication, um, there's some studies that showed that um, uh, patients um, exposed to 46% more daylight took 20%, 22% less pain medication, and they accumulated 20% less um, pain medication cost per stay, which again, if you start looking at that on a national level, can add up to a huge amount of uh, cost savings, as well as obviously um, benefit for the patients. Uh, if you look at improved outcomes, um, you can see it in infant jaundice um, case reduction. Um, you can look at, um, you can also see it when people um, well, on studies of Alzheimer patients, uh, which are which are shown to have less agitation with higher exposure to daylight. So there are lots of examples that show better outcomes when you have access to a window. And let's not um, uh, forget hospital staff. There are significant costs associated with um, medical errors, as well as stress um, in medical staff. Um, I'm quoting a number of studies here in terms of reduced stress. Um, there were some studies that showed that if you had access to daylight and views, uh, nurses were less stressed and less tired. If you have daylight and views, you're going to have less likelihood of having circadian rhythm disruption, which gave better weight management, um, reduced risk of cancer, and uh, reduced um, issues with mood and depression. Um, a uh, study in particular saw a redu reduction in sick days and, and significantly a reduction in me medical errors. Adverse dr drug events cost two billion US dollars annually. And one study in particular showed the presence of windows reduced errors by 40%. So you can imagine how much um, that would um, reduce in terms of cost, but also imagine the um, reduction in um, uh, problems for the patients. So lots of good benefits for medical staff. Um, so this, is, this slide here is just a summary of the different aspects that can be impacted in healthcare environments um, when you have access to daylight and views. Reduction in cost, better outcomes, shorter stays, um, ability to attract uh, patients if you're in a healthcare environment, um, recruiting and retaining um, staff, reduction in medical errors. Of course, you have the energy conservation because you can turn the lights off. Um, and so lots of good benefits specific to healthcare. And yet, currently, uh, in the US, state-of-the-art hospitals, only 44% um, of occupants have access to daylight. And only 20% of the floor area was within 15 feet of the window. Now, there are requirements to have windows in patient rooms where, uh, where specific codes require them. But in general, the staff remains on the interior with no access to daylight and views. And as you can see, there could be impacts on not just their health and wellness, but also on error rates. So moving on to schools. So lots of um, good information and data on studying um, the impacts on school students. They see improved health and growth, better mental and physical health, less dental decay, likely from vitamin D, um, improved eyesight because of the daylight, improved growth and improved immune system. They also re uh, recognized increase in attendance, not just for the students, but for the teachers as well, because obviously the teachers are in their workplace uh, and just like uh, hospital staff have those same benefits um, accrued to them by access to daylight and views. Also, the studies show, a number of studies showed increased student achievement on tests in both maths and English. And something that I would not necessarily have expected because a lot of um, 
a lot of school designers in the 70s thought that windows were a distraction, but actually studies have shown that um, in windowless classrooms, students tend to be um, more uh, hostile, badly behaved, etc. Um, they see better teacher retention, and of course those same energy savings we saw in the um, healthcare environment. This is a quote that I really like. This came from one of the studies by the Heschel Mahone group. You'll see them um, a lot in the literature. They've done a lot of work both in um, education environments, but also in um, workplace uh, office environments, um, looking at the impact of daylight and views. This teacher says, when I've had it with the kids and I just can't answer another question, I just take a minute, I look out of the window and at the view, and then I'm okay. I'm calm and ready to go back in the fray. And the Hesho Mahone group, um, their study said that schools could be saving up to one month of instructional time for the reading and math curriculum um, that could be used for other areas in learning. And that's huge, one month. That's amazing, just for daylighting in, in classrooms. So let's now look to offices and what's the data uh, relating to uh, health and well-being and productivity in offices. Oops. The key, um, key results of the data that have been gathered um, in offices relate to improvements in productivity, reduced absenteeism, and improved attraction and retention of staff. There are many studies, I've, I've listed a few on the left here, um, that in your spare time maybe you, um, you could uh, take a deep dive into. Uh, I've only scratched the surface here. There are lots and lots of studies that show the benefits of windows in um, office environments. Um, in fact, actually interestingly, uh, most of them date back 10 years, uh, maybe even almost 20 years now. So I would say the, the jury is in for all these occupancy, um, occupancy types um, in terms of proving that there is positive benefits of daylight and views um, for productivity, reduction of absenteeism and attraction and retention. Um, you can see on the right here some bullet points that I have um, identified. Um, I pulled some key findings out of the studies that I've listed. Um, 7 to 12% increase in call processing. This was from the seminal study from the Heshon Mahone group of a, um, uh, a telephone call processing center. They actually measured a 16% improvement on cognitive tests for those people who had views versus those that didn't, and 15% more time spent on their primary tasks. I mean, that's, a, that's incredible. Uh, for the people who didn't have a view, they spent more time talking on the phone um, dealing with personal. Uh, personal issues or just talking um, uh, talking with other colleagues on the phone. Another study showed much better quality of life scores, vitality, sleep and efficiency um, when, some, uh, when uh, occupants had a view in daylight. Uh, 46 minutes more sleep a night, that's huge. Less sick leave. Um, and in one study, actually in Iowa, um, our county in Iowa moved their staff from a non-daylight building to a, a well-daylight -day building, and they um, decreased their turnover by 200% and tripled the number of job applicants um, applying to their positions. So pretty, um, pretty significant um, impacts. However, one thing I should point out and that uh, we should all be aware of, especially in the, um, the glass and glazing community, is that all those positive benefits will disappear if the occupant is thermally or visually uncomfortable. And there have been a number of studies to show this um, in two areas, That's, and I wanna talk about thermal discomfort to start with. There is a lot of um, information that supports the fact that the optimum temperature for productivity is around the 71 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit range. And every one degree that you increase or decrease from that optimum, you'll see about a percent reduction in productivity performance. Um, there are a number of studies that support that. Um, one in particular I've identified here in the box in, in orange 
um, uh, the, um, the same study done by the Hashem Mahone group that I mentioned previously saw um, that an increase in temperature from 74 to 76 Fahrenheit was enough to reduce productivity by 2%. And a more recent study, um, two or three years ago, um, from the Well Living Lab in uh, in Minnesota, um, actually just uh, actually was able to determine that thermal comfort or thermal discomfort lowers the satisfaction with all other in indoor environmental um, quality factors. So if you're not warm or you're if you're too cold or you're too hot, it doesn't matter whether you have a view or you have daylight. And then um, not to forget glare, which obviously can be a problem with, with windows. Um, again, the Heshon Mahone group in that same um, office worker study, that call center, they found that glare from the window had a significantly negative influence on productivity of 17%. And they, they concluded um, that this negative effect can be self-canceling from the primary benefits of view. So if you don't make people visually or thermally comfortable, they're not gonna get those same, um, the benefits that uh, windows and daylight um, are supposed to provide. So just to wrap it all up, I, I really like this quote um, from Nick Baker. Um, we basically live um, we spend 90% of our time indoors, whether it be at the office or at home. We are outdoor animals, and yet our built environment is isolating it, um, us from the outside world. And it's the outside world, the, uh, the day-night cycle, the views of nature um, that we, um, we have evolved around and that we need for our health and well-being. We end up with windowless offices under artificial lights all day. We have, this is a graph of the leading causes of death in the US. The majority of them can be impacted by the built environment. Heart disease and cancer we know have our um, implicated um, impacts from circadian rhythm disruption. Alzheimer's disease, they're actually um, uh, looking at the, um, the plaques that are caused in the brain that build up if you don't have good deep delta sleep, which again can, um, uh, is not helped by a circadian rhythm dis uh, disruption. Diabetes is a met metabolic um, disorder. Influenza pneumonia uh, are your, um, immune, is your immune system uh, disrupted. Um, suicide, depression, again, all um, can be supported or not supported by the, um, the built environment. And then lastly, we know we have chronic disease epidemics in, um, in the US and actually in, in globally. Mental health disorders and cardiovascular diseases are predicted to be the top two illnesses worldwide by 2020. Uh, by 2020. And stress, is a prime contributor to both. And so we know that views of nature reduce stress. We have obesity and diabetes as well as ep epidemics. Circadian disruption can also have a negative effect on your meta uh, metabolism and contribute to the um, issues of obesity and diabetes. So to sum up, we're spending 90% of our time indoors and we need to figure out how to, to create our, our um, indoor environment um, in a way that supports better health and well-being, which really is driving, needs to drive the access to um, views of nature and also to daylight to give, give us the right amount of light of the right type at the right time of day. With that said, I will um, uh, I will finish up here. If, if anybody has any questions, you can put them in the chat box, um, and um, I can answer them now. And I think Sarah, are you going to take control? 
Um, I, I can of the of the audio portion. Um, if you don't mind leaving the, your slides up, that would be great. Or clicking through. Um, yep. We have again as a reminder, we have a fall conference is taking place in mid August in Toledo. Um, known as Glass City, we hope to see you there. Um, registration is open at glass.org. Um, registration is also open for Glass Build. Uh, whether you want to attend it, exhibit at it, attend any of the um, Glazing Executives Forum or um, Express Learning Sessions, there's a host of options available to you all in this one space. Um, so we hope to see you there as well. Um, again, if there are any questions, you can put them into the chat. Um, otherwise, we will be posting a recording of this webinar with the handouts of the slides online, um, likely by mid next week, um, if you want to reference back to them later. If there aren't any questions, um, then we appreciate you making the time to attend and we look forward to seeing you next month for actually Sorry, we have one question I think that's come in. Oh, thank you, you're welcome. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for being here, we hope to see you next month. Thank you, Ellen, we appreciate it. You're welcome.